Michael, as a person progresses through their life from infancy mm -hmm. to young childhood, uh, adulthood, and into senior years, do they have the same requirements for bacteria? Do they use the same bacteria? Actually, no, they don't, Tom. What we find is that when an infant is born, its uh, gastrointestinal tract is sterilized, is sterile. The baby doesn't have any natural bacteria in its body. And it picks up the first bacteria from the mother as it's being born, actually, in the birth canal. And most of the bacteria found in infants, children, and even adolescents are the uh, genus Bifidobacteria. So we find these Bifidobacteria, uh, Bifidum, Bifidobacterium longum, Bifidobacterium infantis, mm -hmm. so named because it's found in infants. Mm -hmm. And these are given to the baby by the mother, not only during birth, but then through the mother's milk. So for most infants, probiotic supplementation isn't necessary. In children, however, probiotic supplementation might be necessary, especially if they've been sick or some reason the, the uh, natural balance of intestinal flora has been disrupted. Mm -hmm. And for supplementation, they should probably take more bifidobacteria strains. As okay. opposed to adults, as we get older, that balance shifts to more lactobacillus. Those bacteria tend to be more prominent in our guts than the bifidobacteria strains. Once we reach adulthood, that balance stays pretty constant for the rest of our lives. And in fact, it's somewhat hard to disrupt that balance unless we get sick or there's some uh, disease that causes us to, to disrupt that balance. But for young, young children, uh, especially infants, probiotic supplementation is usually unnecessary unless they're sick. And uh, for children three and above, ages three and above, probably supplementation with bifidobacteria primarily uh, could be a good idea. Now, you, you mentioned uh, several different strains of bacteria here, just bifido, bifido mm -hmm. longum, uh, and so on. Can you explain a little bit about what the differences between all of these strains are? Obviously, as you described, they're Well, they're different, they're, they're, they're different <clears throat> bacteria. Mm -hmm. They reside in somewhat different areas of the intestine. Primarily, the bifidobacteria we find primarily in the colon, in the lowest part of the intestine. Lactobacillus we tend to find all over. Uh, the lower intestine, not, not just in the lower part, not just in the colon so much. And so they sort of have a different area. Uh, they help uh, do a number of the same things, produce vitamins, produce enzymes. Uh, bifidobacteria produce acid, also lactic acid, and, and uh, to acidify the gut and the colon is a good idea. It helps us digest the food. It helps kill off the pathogenic bacteria. You know, a number of these bacteria, almost all of them, produce antibiotic-like substances, which kill off the unhealthy bacteria. That's a natural defense mechanism of most of these bacteria. But the interesting thing is that uh, they're almost like natural, uh, uh, they're called bacteriocins. In other words, they kill off other unhealthy bacteria because they produce substances as they grow to, uh, to help keep us healthy. So this is the normal state of a healthy person? It is. <laughs> In a healthy person, on. that's right. A healthy person. Okay, well, thank you, Michael. <clears throat>